was not. I did not. Add, it's like taped on. I, did you yes. glue the last name onto the end? <laughs> so we have. We just have. Well, hey, to everyone on TikTok, we're obviously welcome to late night show. Uh, we'll be starting here. We're going to be going live also on Instagram. We're gonna go hit that button up there, and bam. All right, so we're on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and everywhere else. So, obviously, I don't even know if anyone follows me on YouTube, so it doesn't really matter. It's all TikTok. Anyways, we have 60 people joining us over there. Yeah, cool. What the hell? What, what was that? That was me opening my TikTok. And <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that you listening to us complain? All right. No, that was... That was uh, that was a guy trying to put a tire on his big rig or oh, something. You're a TikTok junkie. All right. Well, welcome everyone to the late night show. This is, by the way, not a podcast. I don't think it's a it's podcast. Not even close to a podcast. Not even a close to a podcast. And to everyone joining us on TikTok, thank you for joining us on TikTok. Uh, you know, obviously there is a rule that if you do produce content on TikTok, they actually do bump you up the algorithm. Did you know that, Dominic? I didn't know that. That's 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 good to know. Why is the Safe Check podcast not on TikTok? You didn't ask. Well, who's <laughs> let, me, let me get a hold of my producer and smack him upside the head. And find out what the- <laughs> I was going to also say, um, <laughs> your tickets, I, ta- I found out about your tickets today, Tay, and they do come electronically. So oh. I got to get them electronically and I'll send them to you. Okay. So, anyways, uh, on the show tonight, folks, we have two incredible guests uh, joining us tonight on the late night show. Uh, they are both absolutely incredible. Um, I love what they post. If you get to follow them and we'll introduce them here in a second. Um, what they produce when it comes to content or help in the industry very incredible content, what they do, how they help the industry. Um, they've been doing it a long time. I love both of what they both do for the industry. I absolutely love it. So um, I'm jacked on a lot of caffeine right now, Dominic, and uh, I'm excited to have these guests in here. This is late night, yeah, so too. it's it's not a podcast TikTok, and it's not a podcast LinkedIn. This is a, you know... Four guys sitting around talking about the industry. Now, don't forget, we're also going to use ChatGPT for today. And it's going to tell us what topic to talk about today with these gentlemen. And we'll get them to pick the topic because uh, we usually pick the easy one anyway. <laughs> so. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure they like last night wasn't easy. I I, I, I was surprised he picked a hard one. Well, didn't you see the article I sent you today that said TikTok is being stupid? Not TikTok, uh, ChatGPT. It's got a little attitude. I told you that the other yeah. day. It's got attitude. It actually does. Even so. four or just three point five? All of them? Oh, yeah, okay. It's got attitude now. Hmm. Fuck. Is it becoming right. self-aware? Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. becoming. I'm not going to say. What pull I, the plug on that I just thing. about said hey. something really bad. Yeah. Pull the plug and, on that thing. It's it's gonna it's gonna be Terminator shit happening all over yeah. the place here. All right, well, let's bring these guests in before we you say the G word, which we don't say the G word. And by the by, uh, got to let our guests in the green room. There's a rule, gentlemen. Tonight, you don't say the government word to Dominic, or he goes off on this tangent for like an hour, so you can't use the G word. Um, but you can say anything else. So, yes. anyways, anything else for sure. So, welcome, Court Roger, to the late night show. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, thanks for having us. How are you? Thank, thanks for having us. Is this like Showtime After Dark, where like the really juicy stuff gets shared late at night? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah just <laughs> let loose. loose. There's no rules. Yeah. Let loose. Yeah. This we play not a podcast. That's let it fly. It's not a podcast. Not it's a podcast. Not <laughs> we just we just let her go. We tell it the way it is. No. Well, you know the the interesting thing, Greg. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of maybe answer if that was a question. Court is that we wanted to create something because I know a lot of restaurateurs and people, especially chefs, finish your shift, especially in the Eastern time, because we're still working out here in a restaurant. Well, actually, not maybe not right now. It's starting to get quieter earlier. Um, we thought it'd be great to do a show that was late night. They gave people in the industry something to do while they sat in their bed, other than TikToking, like Dominic does. And uh, 
listen to a show talking about the industry, bringing awesome guys like yourselves on the show. So that's how we started. And it. so we can say a lot of shit that we can't normally say on the other one. <laughs> so that's how we did it. That's how we did it. See, Roger, I figured it out one sooner or later, buddy. Nice. <laughs> how many it emails? Suits you, Jay. It suits you. Right? Yeah. How many, how many, how many emails I must have sent you over the past, Roger? Going, I got an idea. It wasn't just you, Dominic. <laughs> Poor Roger got it too. Oh. So, yeah. Anyways. Jay's gears are always turning. Thanks. Yeah. Roger. They never stop. I got that tea. That tea. Have you guys heard about that new tea? Well, it's not new tea, but it's a tea that's supposed to replace the wajabi and stuff like those diet things. You guys are looking at me like on a different planet. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so Ozemtek, you know, whatever it's called. <laughs> Did you buy it on the side of the road? No, 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 no. This is true. This is true. This is true. So this tea is like, uh, I think it's from the Middle East or something, but it's just to do the same thing. And Huberman uses it every morning. And he gets jacked up in the morning. He doesn't even drink coffee. He drinks his tea. But you have to buy the special straw that goes in the special cup that you put the tea leaves in, and then you put hot water, and then you sip it, and it doesn't go up the straw because the straw's got a filter on it. Starting that tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. Sounds like good marketing. to sell High octane tea? Water. Is that what it is? It's supposed it's to be. It's supposed to be insane. It's supposed to yeah. really, like... Yeah, it's supposed to go nuts. So we'll see what happens. It says like it's the poor man was empty. Um, Shit. Alternative to, to <laughs> Joe. I'll have some of that. Why not? <laughs> so anyways, oh. you guys created this stuff. You should know about it down there. Us poor Canadians, we don't have those cool things. <laughs> no. <laughs> of course, like, I'll look it up as soon as we hang up. <laughs> exactly. There we go. There's two things you guys got to look up. It's homework. Anyways. Gentlemen, why don't you take a few seconds, introduce yourselves, so I don't mess it up, because Dominic always gives me the text later on saying I didn't introduce you properly. So, Court, go for it. My name's Court, uh, Go Explore Local, uh, headquartered here in Kansas City. Um, we really, uh, our focus is helping restaurants get more visits from their very best customers with a subscription vip club where people are paying every month to get exclusive offers and experiences and really the inspiration came from panera and if you've seen panera's 11 a month sip club um they have a million people paying them 11 dollars a month uh for coffee and so we were like wow here's a way that restaurants and really any merchant can um get more visits from their very best customers uh and generate recurring revenue and what we've been doing helping spread the word um, and really looking at how can we help restaurants get butts and seats and generate revenue even when there are no butts and seats. Cool. That's cool. It's right wild. On. It's like yeah. really, really cool. Can't Roger. Have, yeah. More butts and seats. That's what everyone wants, right? Yeah. But it's not just butts and seats. It's profitable butts and seats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm Roger and I'm uh I'm with Restaurant Rockstars. I'm a 23-year veteran restaurateur founder of five high-volume concepts that I've now sold. And now I'm an industry speaker at food shows and different industry events. I have a weekly podcast called Restaurant Rockstars Podcast. I do some personal restaurant coaching. And uh, I'm also a partner in a Seattle-based hospitality technology company called Hospitality Innovation Labs. Cool. <laughs> I got a couple things going. I'm 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 a busy guy. Nice. And well, and you drive a convertible Corvette. Yeah, I got a '66 Corvette Stingray that I've had for 48 years, and uh, I got a '60 <laughs> MGA also that I've had for 52 years. So yeah, yeah, I, I've had these cars a long, long uh, time. Would you get your first one when you were three? What's going on there? <laughs> no, well, believe it or not, I'm in my 60s. But, no, uh, not come on. No, I, I know. Look at him. I have passed. Yeah, no. Actually, Jeez. I'm I'm 61 years old, and uh, uh, I got into the car thing because my dad used to own a trucking company, and his hobby was restoring um, vintage sports cars. So cool. that's how I got started in that. Nice. So I inher I got the yeah I got the MG when I was just starting high school. Couldn't drive well. I drove it, but I wasn't legally allowed to drive it. 
and then uh, the Corvette I sort of inherited um, when my dad got a little too old and he just kind of passed it on to me. So yeah, mm -hmm. they, they've been a la legacy. They've been in the family a long time. The MG wasn't like a Ferris Bueller's Day Off thing, right? Where you, you stole it out of the garage and <laughs> drove it drove it off the city. <laughs> Every now and again, you know, I think when we were younger, we did lots of things that we talk about now, but we wouldn't recommend our kids do. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's get started, gentlemen, for tonight. It is it is late for Roger. I can't believe you're 61, man. You look young. You Thank look you. So young. I stay right. active. I take I my know. vitamins. Court, Court, I got an I got a question for you while while Jay's queuing us up here. Um, yes, sir. How is uh, how is you, um, go explore local doing in Canada? Do you have any Canadian uh, people that have signed up and they're doing? Do not. We do not have anybody in Canada, but we work worldwide. So yeah, we'd love yeah, to we got to get the word out. It's it's an awesome, awesome, awesome concept to to get people to to come to your restaurant and and come more often. I'm assuming right. happens with a membership like like anything else. You you've got a little bit more of a an a, a affinity to to going more often, which is which is cool. I didn't know Panera had how many how many million. Uh, the last number I saw was over a million people paying wow. the eleven dollars a month. Uh, they report um, visits yeah. went from four to ten a month once they started this unlimited uh, SIP club. Um, and I think uh, twenty five percent of their total transactions are subscription. So that's whether the person comes zero times or thirty times, you know. And you know they're not just getting bagels. Um, and so what what them. what qualifies you? <laughs> So when you build a program for for a local restaurant, what do you what do you do? Do they do they pick something off the shelf on your app? Yeah, so we can help them set up their own membership club and they can have offers and experiences. Doesn't just have to be um, uh, food and I can't find remember the old school entertainment cards? Oh, yeah. yeah with the entertainment books and you buy you know yep. tear it out or you get it punched that kind of thing Absolutely. Yeah. works kind of the same way and so you know they would sign up put in their credit card and um if they want it it unlocks the offers on their phone um hmm. and then they can then they show it it gets redeemed and the offers can be set monthly so every month they rotate it could be a weekly offer a daily offer um, so like um, we have a Mexican place has uh, daily chips and queso. If you're a member every day, you get free chips and queso. Uh, that's kind of such a good idea. Um, so yeah, that and right um, happy to chat more about it. Yeah. That's cool. Now, let's get them on great. our show, Jay. Let's get them on the safe check show. Yeah. Just because it, it's, it's, we're, we're about helping rest as much as we want to sell training. We, we don't talk about selling training ever in our show. Jay, you're supposed to help me with that, but anyway. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, we're, we're about helping. Uh, Hi, um, Mr. Rolf. Hi, Matt. Matt's on Instagram. More business, us. So that's that's cool. Um, it, it, yeah, it's, it's cool. So, People, so, you know, the, the I think the, the cool thing about technology is that all this stuff's out there. And the cool, the bad thing about technology is there's so much stuff out there. People don't know yeah. that there's so much stuff out there, right? It's just that they're... they're they're not looking. They would never think of it. They're, you know, not not everybody listens to. It's not a podcast, live streaming show. <laughs> so you're trying to make it a podcast. This is what's pissing me off. No, it's not. Not, not even podcast. close to a podcast. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into this before Dominic. We say the G word, and Dominic goes off for half an hour. <laughs> Um, but I, I do want to mention a couple things. One to everyone that's watching us on all the other channels. Would that be that called hitting the G spot, Jay? Well, well, just, you know what? Matt Roger Matt Rolf says hi to Roger. Hey Matt Rolf, how are you? I haven't talked to you in a while. Matt's joining us as well. Excellent. Awesome. And to everyone else that's joining us also on TikTok, which we do have a lot of viewers right now on TikTok. Um Ask us questions. We got lots of questions. You got two incredibly smart gentlemen that are joining us uh, tonight. So any questions you have today on the topics we're going to be talking about, please do. Also, Roger, I have to tell you that there's a, a report that just came out. Well, I think you can just Google it. Top 10, or is it top 10, Dominic? Podcast? 
yeah. in Canada, right. in awesome. Canada. Right on. And I have three of them. <laughs> That's fantastic. Not bad, eh? Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm yeah. Surprised. Well, it took a little bit, but you got a following and personality that goes with it. There you go. It's plus the... add good looks in there, and then you're set, right? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. He's got a good. He's got a good. It's, it's, I won't the say button. the P word, but he's got a good voice for. Yeah. It's, it's, not a it's 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 the uh... it helps to have a voice. <laughs> Anyway, I, I got to tell you this one thing today, just so all the viewers know that I'm totally wide awake. I was on a show yesterday with uh, Sean Walsh. I went, I actually went to listen to his show and then I ended up being on his show. Um, and Matt or uh, Sean asked, one of the people asked a question to me and it says, Jay, what was one of your holy shit moments you've ever had in your career? As a podcaster, I said, no one knows this. And I, I don't know if I've told you guys this. Um, Dominic knows it, but... Um, a couple of years ago, I fell asleep on a podcast. <laughs> so, in the middle so, of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was warm in my studio, had the heat on, and oh, next yeah. thing I know, I was <laughs> I was out. What was and the last word you remember saying? I only know is I remember the hey Jay, is, is everything okay there? And like, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so no one knew cool. that. So well, the ambulance get, is pulled up to your house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the, guys, you don't need the AED. You know those things. No, um, it was. It was. They put the so jumper no cables that. to you. <laughs> I, was, I was teaching. A, I was a class on how to be real and authentic. That's what I was telling everyone. Mm -hmm. You got to tell the truth. Anyways, so on this show now, everyone that joined us, uh, Matt Rolf, maybe it was maybe maybe it was the show I did with Matt Rolf before, fell asleep. Um, but I did fall asleep once. Out of you should see all the people joining us on the Instagram. Um, it was once, but I won't fall asleep again. I, I'm in a different studio and stuff like this. But anyways, tonight let's get into the topics of what we're going to be talking about. So here's Chat GPT four. I've wrote in list three topics for tonight's late night show in relation to the restaurant industry. What should we talk about? You guys ready? Yeah. So this is AI. Just so you know, it's smarter than us combined. Um, and let's see what it's going to tell us. Tonight, let's go. So, and let's see how accurate it is, and let's see if it actually listens to us. Here we go. Hopefully, it's not the same damn topics last last night, eh, Dominic? Uh, so, it's, it's, so that, that first one is. I think we've talked about that, not with these gentlemen, but so the rise of virtual kitchens and food delivery services. Number two, sustainability. And farm to table movements. And number three, the impact of technology. Dominic, he kind of did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 tell, it, tell it to wake up and give us some different different answers than last night and, and stop recycling their shit. <laughs> All right, let's ask it. So here's here's what it is. So so it's I told you it's it's getting an attitude right now. Is AI oh, I like that first one. I, I, so I the evolution of dining adequate. Do you know who teaches di dining adequate really good? Is that guy right there, Roger? Dining he is, adequate. He's totally in the digital age, though. In the digital that's age. an interesting topic. I think that'd be fun to talk about. Other than celebrity on restaurants, you don't want to hear that. Great tip. Uh, the great tip debate. Ooh, that's a good one too. Yeah. Right. So which one do you gentlemen want to go? You guys get to pick tonight on our not to podcast show. Let's talk about tipping. Do you want to go? You're going in, eh? Like that's all in. Yeah. Roger. Let's talk about Let's tipping. do it. That is like, that's almost government. Court, you're okay with tipping? <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go into the dining of tipping. So it's asking us to address this continuing issue of tipping in the restaurant industry, right? Exploring various models being tested around the world from the traditional percentage-based tips in the United States to service included uh, pricing in parts of Europe and Asia. Discuss the impacts of these models on staff wages, customer satisfaction, and the overall dining experience. So gentlemen, what do you think? Who wants to start? Court? Court? Well, I would love, 
you know, I would love to know what it's like in Canada. Is, is there a kind of a backlash against tipping in Canada or is that I, I just think, a uniquely American? No, no, I, I, I'll jump in. I, I think we, we are very closely. Jay, and then you can talk for a second. No, 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 no. I'm not saying a thing. Um, I, I think we're closely aligned with what's going on in the U.S. Like, I think our, our cultures are pretty, pretty similar. They're, they're, it's, it's been a topic in the media quite a bit these last probably two years where your, your, your pickup places that normally never ask for tips are asking for tips. You're, everybody's asking for tips. The tip uh, default percentages are higher. You, you, you don't see 15, often you see 18, 20, 25% as you know, with 20 being kind of the top one. Uh, so, um, I, and I, from what I've what I've seen and heard and read, it, that the backlash is probably the same in the U.S. Is is that am I on target there? Or? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I think people are just feed. Like, there's so many fees, right? There, there's fees on all the time, and then it's like, you know, you want me to tip also, and it's tough because. Your staff, restaurant staff don't get paid very much. And, you know, they are working their butts off. And yeah. it's a delicate balance. And until we can, like, really address the wage issue, I, you know, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? I've always believed that tipping is based on service provided. And unfortunately, there's a lot of less than desirable service experiences that happen. And there's a sense of entitlement that's been created where people think they should get a certain percentage, as much as 20% for providing no service or very lackluster service. Mm -hmm. That's one side of it. And then here in the States, we're seeing that non-service providers like I go to this ski resort every weekend, right? And I get a cup of coffee with my wife when we're halfway through skiing. We pour the coffee ourselves, And all we do is we go up to the cashier to pay for the coffee. And you go through this screen that says, how much do you want to tip? 20%, 18%, 15% to the cashier who's simply taking your money. And I'm like, that's just wrong. He's not providing a service or any kind of hospitality. So those two things are pretty contentious in my book. So I'm a generous tipper. If I feel like the person went above and beyond, they knew their products, they knew their menu, they were entertaining, they delivered great service, not just the food. You know, they weren't order takers. They took me on what I call the magical journey and gave me an experience, not just here's your food, give me 20%. You know, and that happens a little too often here. I, I just see that. So I think it, it's, it's, it's the same, same up here. It's the you know? same here, Roger. Like Starbucks is really the one that is is the one that i see on that whole pad where yeah. you go to starbucks not saying that they don't write my name nice on the cup and say my name at the at the till nice or scream it out to everyone um but they, they i feel bad for the staff having and there hasn't been anyone that's like hey look at they're embarrassed to hand you that machine and for you to hit the no tip button on that machine like i feel bad about them i don't know if that was in training but it, it feel bad for him to do that. And I think, I think we got to pay them better if that's the case. And then try not to make it off the people enjoying uh, the coffee from what that is. I mean, is that the case? I have an idea. I, my theory is from what I've researched in, in that whole model is that they're trying to elevate your experience similar to what it would be in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So you, so you're almost like psychologically justifying the nine dollar coffee you just bought, um, right? So in and they said that that was that whole thing about them saying your name, writing your name on the cup, was that higher level of experience that you felt like you were in a fast casual or or in a restaurant, and then the tip came, and I'm like, oh, and I, like my heart breaks every time watching these people because they know. And they, they almost force the poor server or, or whatever, the attendant, to hand you that machine while you look at it going, like, are you kidding me? And then you hit it. So I, 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 I'm with you on the tipping thing about service. I think, I think it's, it's, I think we're seeing service be so questionable nowadays 
Um, it's, it's interesting too. I'll give you this as well. All the whole servicing. So I say it, that's interesting. It's funny that Chad said that, but uh, is, um, I'm just doing a poll on my LinkedIn channel right now. And one of the things that I asked everyone on the poll was four things that you need help with. And one was, you know, staff training, not one person. I think I had one person click yes. And the rest was, I need help on marketing. I need help on other things that are related to service. So I find that very interesting. Now, yeah, as a training said, company, we, we I, you know, I think training's first, right? You got to train your well. people to make sure. Yeah. It, but isn't it, that weird? Like, I'm going to pull it up. It, it's, it's, um, it's, it's sad that that's, we, we speculated the other day on why on your poll <clears throat> training was the, the fourth choice, right? Of the, of the four options. It, it, it garnered the least amount of, of, of votes. Um, my speculation was up here, there's, there's nobody to work. Nobody wants to work, even though there's, you know, there's, there's people that are unemployed that, you know, we could get into the government talk, Jay, we won't about why that is, but um, there, there, there is no, um, there's no desire for a lot of people to want to work and the restaurant industry is suffering because of that. So, you know, they want help with marketing. They want help with with some of these other things because they it's it's almost like they've given up on. Do you think, do you think that? I, you I think, think that. that Jay, I really think. Well, the value proposition is lost with short staffing. I mean, you're charging a premium. You've had to raise prices because of inflation. Guests still have high expectations when they go out to eat, and if. The place is short staffed and everyone's working twice as hard to fill in for the people that are missing then the guest is getting a poor experience and paying a premium for it so that's sort of a catch-22 that you know what can you do other than train people well and create a culture i think where people want to be and give them recognition and rewards for doing amazing things in your business and building relationships with your customers I mean, mm -hmm. that was part yeah. of the key to my yeah. success, you know, building a dream team staff and recruiting them, not just hiring any warm body off the street, but figuring out, you know, who are your best players and asking them, who do you know that would fit here that isn't happy in their current job, you know, and we have a fun culture and we recognize people for their accomplishments and we have regular incentives for taking on additional responsibility, you know, and people sort of gravitate to that versus the other place down the street that just doesn't really care. Court, uh, what do you think? What do you think, Court? Well, I'm going to, I, that spurred something from my marketing brain is one thing I talk to, to restaurant owners a lot when they want to post on Instagram, they want to post pictures of their food. But I talk about post your people. Who are the people that are working in their restaurant and doing all right. the things and like make yeah. them the stars like Roger was talking yes. about? Love for that. example, we work with a restaurant and they do a special drink every month. And we go in there and we film the bartender showing how she makes it. And, you know, then we post it. It's like one of our most popular videos every month. And she says, people come in, they know her. Oh, you're the person I saw on TikTok, right? And you're making your people famous. Let them do the fun dances on TikTok. Let them do the stuff where, you know, in your restaurant. And, then when guests come in, they feel like they know you. And then yes. Roger, to your point, you know, then they, that experience, oh yeah, you know, we're more willing to, to tip or, or have that good experience. Cool. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Everyone's got a unique personality. We always encourage people to use it and, and entertain the kids, you know, because the kids often determine where the families go out to eat. And if you can build a rapport with the kids, they're going to say, I want to go to that place because it's fun. Or I like that server because he juggles or he tells jokes. He makes me laugh. It's like, you know, it's like you build relationships with your guests. And that is marketing unto itself that doesn't cost you anything. I, I was in a restaurant in Montreal in November at this event there. And me, actually, me and Matt Rolf went for lunch. And it was a singing server. Nice. Awesome. Well, but he was like old he was like 60 some years old opera <laughs> and he was just singing along while he served tables and yeah 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 he like, you know, very guy. low and i'm like that is awesome right like i'll remember that forever yeah it's memorable and, and then and then you look at the tip well 
buddy's probably like singing there just going look at these suckers he's raking it in yeah yeah Sick, you know, he learned a long time ago. It's like that's my <laughs> thing. That's my trademark. That's his trademark, I sing right? Tips. Yeah, I love it. Singing, awesome. The singing server. How There's nothing cool wrong with that. No. So, do you think? Do you think more and more people are going to figure this out, or do you think we're just doomed? Like I it will never come back to it was. I think owner operators and and GMs, and I hate to use the word GM. I think of them as leaders, but I think people get really close to the restaurants and they don't take a step outside the door and get, take a fresh mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, they think I got this and I don't need to do anything different, even though they know things aren't really working. It's like, I'm so close to this. I've been doing this for so long and I'm so, you know, some, in some cases just tired because of all the challenges, oh, yeah. both COVID and then after COVID, it's like, when is it going to stop? I mean, I used to have fun in this business and then all of a sudden, wham, 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 you know? So people are beaten up in this business and they really need to, you know, rediscover the passion of why they got into this business in the first place and then figure out a new way forward, you know, paradigm shift a little bit, but get a fresh perspective on your business and on your people and on your operating philosophies and just a new way is a better way for sure. Do you think that passion is getting less and sorry, Dominic, <laughs> but do you think that passion is going to get less, is getting less and less, Roger? Like, do you see that? I see it all the time. I mean, I talk to people all the time in this business. Yeah. Um, I'm on all the, you know, I'm on all the social media restaurant owner groups and yeah, they're all crying in their soup every day. It doesn't seem like anybody's happy. Yeah. And I hate to see that, you know, because this is a proud industry and it is. Well, it was fun. On Wasn't it fun once? Like. It was always fun for me. It was always fun, yeah. Like I always yeah. had a blast. Like uh, my daughter's trying to get a job as a as a chef right now at a, a restaurant here in Edmonton, and I was telling her about it, and she's like, kind of give me the look. I'm like, it'd be so much fun. <laughs> like that's why I said it'd be so much fun to work in the kitchen again and learn different things and and all this yeah. stuff. And you know, I'm trying to get that, but then you know, like you said, I don't know if I recall talking to a restaurateur in a long time that is like man this is a lot of fun i can't it's all doom and gloom so we need to i think we yeah. need to turn that ship around and and go back to those days because it was it, but that's the thing too and i said this might have been on a show i was on today earlier is that we tend to and a lot of podcasters out there we're all guilty is we tend to talk a lot about the negative right? Like, like it's very rare. You hear podcasts. I know you do, Roger, you talk about the positive with your guests, but there's not many of that, right? It's all doom and gloom talking about, you know, in, in respect to all the different things that we have in the industry, you know, labor problems to staffing problems to all these different things, but we don't tend to talk about the positive too much. And I think we need to because we all because obviously, you know, that, that whole negative whatever it is, loves company or all those things. We tend to just focus on that. Like when, like I'm doing a lecture in May out in Whistler. And it was funny when I was when the writer lady was meeting with me, I said the whole topic is all positive. And she's like, what? Like, aren't you going to talk about like this? And I said, no, I want everything that I'm going to talk about is going to talk about the positive parts of the industry. There's positive in everything you look at. There's a positive in a $9 coffee from Starbucks. It helps us all raise our prices up and blame Starbucks, right? Like this, you know, there's, there's a lot of positive in all these things that we have to look at. But I tell you, me being one of them, I have been guilty sometimes to talk a lot of negative and what's happening in the industry, you know, and we're trying to make that relationship to the owners on their problems. And I think if we can focus more on, um, I'm doing another show right now and at the end, of the each episode we've been asking our guests, what, what was your favorite meal and who did you have that with? And they all typically are saying their, you know, their spouse um, or a family member or a great meal and experience. And you can see them light up as chefs. And that's the stuff that we need more of in my mind in this industry is enough with the doom and gloom. We get it. <laughs> it's, it's not great, but there's a lot of positive stuff that that we do and, and the industry gives and, and provides and uh i think we need to embrace that more it's really just... like what uh court said a little while ago about posting your people and making yeah. you know heroes out of them and what they do amazing things every day some of your people do and you got to share that love you know and spread it to your guests and spread it to your teammates and it's just up levels uh, a restaurant it makes people feel good about who they are and what they're doing 
it starts with the leaders, though, right, Roger? I, you got to be a positive owner or an yeah, operator. Yeah, sure. Well, you know what? The biggest problem is people think of themselves as the boss. They don't necessarily think of themselves as a leader. And that word delegation gets thrown around way too much when it's really about empowerment, not delegation. Mm -hmm. Anybody can hold the title of manager and be promoted to manager. And it doesn't mean they're competent to lead or they're experienced or they're inspiring to their troops. You know, yeah, so it's really about empowerment. Not. Recognize mm -hmm. talent in people, recognize and reward them for their achievements and give them more responsibility. And that up levels the whole organization. And it's okay if somebody doesn't want more responsibility. You might have a rock star fry cook, and that's all he wants to do is be a rock star fry cook. You got to embrace that too. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you 100% on that. I, I've, Jay, we had this the, a very similar conversation with Monty, which was celebrate your people. And, 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 and if, if, if you're not going to do the, if you're afraid of doing the posting and all that stuff, ask somebody on your staff because there's probably somebody in there that's going to be willing and wanting to do it okay. and going to embrace that. And then all of a sudden, they're going to be an important part of your marketing team. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm with you 100%. And, and I think the, the cool thing about this industry, because there's a lot of people that come into it, is you don't know all the talents that your people possess until you give them that opportunity. You have no idea on on the things that, and often we don't ask them. I, I do, we just have a small crew, but I, I ask my staff all the time, it's like, what do you want to do? Like, don't, don't think that this other thing is out of your possibility or the realm of possibility of writing content. It's like, well, I don't know nothing about that. I said, well, that might, that might be the, that, that might be the really good thing about you doing it is that you know nothing about it because you're, you're going to approach that task or that that challenge with zero knowledge and you're going to go learn everything about it if you want to do it well. So you're going to have a, a, the ability to make this so much better than somebody who thinks that they know it all because that that comes across as somebody who thinks that they know it all. So yeah, embrace that talent that you got in your kitchens in your front of house really is you know everywhere in your business in any business not just the food service business and that's that's another reason for people to stay it's not always about money i think money is a challenge back to the tipping part right but finding a way to to pay your staff more um might be in in giving them more benefits jay the the music's coming up really loud i'm not sure why because you're really old no <laughs> Well, Dominic, I'll add to that. Um, I was at a restaurant a couple of weeks ago, and I kind of dabble as a food inventor. So I go around and I do, you know, ridiculous videos at restaurants. So I was doing one at a restaurant. And I was showing uh, my my server, you know, what we do. And she was like, "Oh yeah, we do videos all the time, but we post it on our personal page, like their own personal TikToks and Instagrams." And she showed me they're wearing the restaurant shirts. They're in the restaurant doing the dances and stuff. And so I chatted with the owner. I was like, let them do your TikTok. Like they didn't have anything on TikTok, nothing. And that just goes to what you're all saying, you know, take your people and I'm kind of an elder millennial. So like we have to kind of embrace that these younger folk know how to grab attention of people and so yeah. you know let them take the wheel you know and let them because they'll they'll do a lot of things to bring in uh, you know business for you or the um i had i remember watching the marketing manager for shopify i think it was shopify um when they were uh during the pandemic i think it was during the pandemic it was like second year of the pandemic and i was watching a, a show about that she was on talking about what she did around TikTok. She said she went out in the staff and found two of the craziest people on the staff with the highest energy and said, go and break TikTok on our behalf. Like go and just go crazy. And she said she couldn't believe it. <laughs> the stuff that they did um, over on TikTok to generate that brand and build that brand awareness. But she said she just went and found the two of the most high energy you know, crazy people on staff and said, you're on TikTok now. There's your job. Go build, go break our brand or go build our brand on TikTok. 
And I think we need to do more of that. I think we need to celebrate our people more. Um, I always believe people follow people, not businesses, right? Like, um, especially if you work for, you know, a chain restaurant or a restaurant like that. I think we, we need a face of the company. Um, Walmart is doing that right now. The CEO of Walmart has become the face of Walmart, uh, which we've never really had a face of Walmart. Nope, really? Never, seen it. never. But the CEO now is getting out behind the desk. He's putting regular clothes on. He's got his, the little clip on his shirt like every like his staff does. And he gets on. Um, I recommend following him. He's brilliant. Um, he was on Simon Sinek's podcast uh, about a couple months ago. And just the way that he sees things and then also becomes a, the face now of one of the biggest companies in the world, actually the most employers of, in the world that works for Walmart and how he built is building his brand that uh, is helping identify us to, or connecting us with Walmart. And that's really in a way he's kind of making himself the, you know, the person. Um, but there's a celebration in that as well. So I think we need to do more of that. I think restaurants definitely need to do that. You need to be the face. Now I say this, and sorry, I'm going to blab here for a second. My dad, when I was young, and I might have told you this before, Roger. Yeah. When I was when I was young, and my dad, we'd be young, and, and we like lived in restaurants when I was young. Um, he would be. Yes, I'm talking about tipping, Dominic. <laughs> God, I'm gonna win work wife. Um, but is that um I'm focusing here? So my dad would um say, Hey, let's go to Nick's you know restaurant. And I'd be like, What, what like what do you mean? He goes, Oh, I know that I know Nick. And like he would know Nick. He heard about Nick, and you know, like he, he might have known or said hi once, but he always related the restaurant to the owner or the chef. Let's go see that person, right? Let's go see that poster. Let's go to the El Cap- Arc, whatever it was called, uh, Cabo's, right? It was always so-and-so restaurant. So I think there's something in that that we need to look at in today's world is, but we don't necessarily, we're scared sometimes to put our face on the brands, but we all know who owns Uber right? or uh, um, Tesla, right? We all know who owns Amazon, Right, like we know those Facebook, like we know those big brands and their association yes. to who they are, and I think there's something there that we connect with more than we connect with a logo or a corporate or corporation brand or a restaurant brand, right? And and it might go back to the days of the Colonel or Dave from Wendy's, right? So I don't know. I think I, I think we need to do more of that, and then you can get into bigger tips. There you go. Dominic, I'll bring it back. Well, that's wow, cool. I like how you brought that back, Jay. Like that. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna ask, how do you, how do you, um, to Roger and Court, how do you take that? Use your employees, use their talents to. I'm not gonna ask them to to fix the tipping issue, but how do you use that to engage them more, and or find a way to reward them more either with money with benefits so that so that the consumers aren't pissed about it I, I think owners 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 put those options in place so that they're, they're trying to reward their employees more by getting bigger tips right and it's 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 starting to backfire so I'm gonna ask a question I don't know the answer how did we get to this point where restaurants don't have to pay minimum wage and why can't we do that i i don't know we up up here we uh, almost i think every province has a at least a 15 dollars minimum wage so and, and and in some places restaurants are paying a premium to that just because there's nobody to work so I don't know if we have the same challenge that you do down in the States where you've got six or seven dollar wages plus tips, right? Because is that how it is down there? First of all, is that how it is? Yeah, I mean some states. Chipotle is paying fourteen dollars. Don't get you don't get tips at Chipotle. I mean, I, well, I guess the drivers do or whatever. But um I mean if if I was weighing it out and I could go work at Amazon and get paid pretty good 
or work at a restaurant for five or six dollars an hour guaranteed plus maybe tips i mean i don't know if there's people that don't want to work i think if you create the right situation people will gravitate towards you and pay is a big part of that um so i don't know i'm a dreamer maybe how can we rethink the whole compensation thing you know roger i'd love your take on that well, we used to incentivize people, and it didn't matter if you were one of the leaders or you were the fry cook. It's like I would have regular brainstorming sessions once a month where I'd bring the whole team in, and we'd sit there for half an hour. I'd have all these flip charts and, you know, Sharpie markers telling people, I don't care. You're in the trenches. You have eyes, and you have best practices, and you see things that we might be missing. And if you come up with any idea that either cuts costs, increases sales, a new marketing idea, something that'll increase profits, or just a better way of doing things, if I can track it, I'm going to give you a piece of that action as long as you work for me. Awesome. And that was incredibly powerful. And you know, I could give you examples of how that worked, but it didn't matter who you were. It's like I incentivize people for, for coming up with ideas. I'm not the only guy with the ideas. It's like 50 employees. We came up with some pretty powerful ideas. That was one idea. We also had a weekly recognition program where anyone could be nominated for. It could be any employee, any team member saying, hey, Roger, you, did you hear what Sally did this week? No, tell me what Sally did, right? And we had this program called Difference Dollars. And what that meant was most of your employees work on Fridays and Saturdays because those are the busiest shifts in any restaurant, right? And so we would give away $20 bills and a can of Red Bull once on a Friday, once on a Saturday to whoever won. How did you win for making a difference, for going above and beyond, for solving a guest problem, delivering amazing hospitality, helping a team member, whatever it was. If it was an extraordinary story, I wanted to hear about it. So I would recognize that person in front of their peers. You know, we'd have 25 or 30 people standing around before the start of service on a Friday and the same on a Saturday. And this week's winner is Sally. And wait till you hear what Sally did. And then I'd give Sally the 20 bucks and a can of Red Bull. But it didn't stop there. I went into my office, had this template on the computer that said difference dollars, big and bold. And then I type her name in big and bold. And then what she did that made the difference. And we had all these frames from Walmart or Target. And we hung them all over the place. They were in the kitchen. They were in the employee break area. They were in the back hallway. They were in the employee bathroom. When I sold that place, there had to be 300 differences you know, framed on the walls everywhere. And the coolest thing is when you hired somebody new and they were on a break and you couldn't help but notice those people reading all these differences because they had nothing else to do. They're drinking a soda and they're, look what Sally did, look what John did. And they suddenly got it. This is the culture of this place. It's like everybody uplifts the organization. And if you don't fit here, you kind of vote yourself off the island. You don't have to fire people anymore. You either assimilated the culture or you were gone, you know? And pretty soon we just had the dream team where everyone was just this family. And who do you think was the beneficiary of all this love? It was the guest and the experience that the guests received because that was the culture. So just some ideas, simple things to execute. Doesn't cost a lot of money. And some of them had ROI because some of these ideas far delivered, you know, above and beyond whatever it cost me to incentivize these people to come up with the ideas. Yeah. So. Some and you had long-term staff, Roger, right? Like they. Oh, stayed yeah. Up. I mean, I owned these restaurants for 20 years, and I had people that worked for me for 18 years, 15 years, 12 years, 10 years. I mean, long-time people. And, and there's a benefit there because, you know, they say that every time you hire someone, you get them up to speed in the job, and you lose them because the average tenure is something like three months in the restaurant business for new employees. It costs you like 4000 bucks every time you have to replace that person. Lost wages, time, productivity, training, all that stuff. No restaurant can afford that. And that's U.S. dollars I'm talking about. But, you know, same percentage applies, I'm sure, in Canada. It's yeah. a very expensive proposition to have turnover. Yeah. Roger, I'd love your feedback on this as a restaurant owner perspective. Um, yeah. I've got places now where it's uh, serverless um, service. So you go, there's a QR code, you scan it, goes to the online ordering, okay, and it knows your table. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I noticed it does a really good job of is upselling. It offers you add-ons, suggestive selling. Hey, you might like this beer, blah, blah, blah. 
And it was a real, mm-hmm. and um, I bet they, that upsells better than a person can, right? I bet, oh, I bet yeah. bringing people through that, I don't will think so. More money. No. Then they just have no. runners. No, it, I, I think, yeah, sorry, uh, Roger, it was your question. Okay. I'll let you answer. Sorry. <laughs> You know, I think there's a place for everything. If that's what the guest is looking for, speed and convenience, then okay. I think there's far too much technology that tries to replace hospitality as opposed to enhancing hospitality. I think the first time I saw this was, I don't know, seven, eight, ten years ago. I'm in an airport. Everything is automated. There's no servers. There's a kiosk sitting in front of every single stool or booth yeah. or table and you just like bup, 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 and here are the pictures of the food and this is what the price is and you just kind of order it and there it is and then it comes to your table but it's like you know it's getting people in and out of airports but now there's a lot of quick serve places that replace people because of labor that makes sense but only if the guest is not looking for a true hospitality experience. And I guess I'm just an old school guy. I had full serve restaurants. I was all about hospitality. I was all about staff training. I was all about the personality of my people. And I always looked at this business as show business. It's entertainment, right? And I used to tell my people when the doors open for business, it's like the curtain going up and it's showtime. You're not a server. You're not a bar. You're not a cook. You're on stage. You're an actor. You know, turn, give people lots of reasons to come back, give them an experience, entertain them. And that's where the personality came in. And that's when people would juggle and tell jokes to the kids and, you know, just really talk to people. Like you treat everyone like they're an old time customer or an old friend. Even if they're a first time visitor, you treat everyone that way. You introduce yourself by name, you build an instant rapport with people. That's what brings people back again. Because the competition wasn't doing that. We were doing it, but the competition wasn't. And that was yeah. an competitive advantage. And, 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 yeah, I, I'm i with you, probably because I'm old too. But, uh, yeah. Jay, um, Court, I, I think that the people, the, the, the businesses, not just restaurants, but any business that does what Roger just explained there um, will gain instant recognition and loyalty, especially if they do it and do it well, and they're authentic at it, they're not faking it, um, because so many are not doing it, and it's less yeah. and less that are doing it, and people are craving that service. They're craving that hospitality, and there's and most of us, including young people, are sad to see it go. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's the reality. I mean, there's a McDonald's with no people now, right? Have well, you seen that? Yeah. yeah. Robots making your food. And so, you know, whether we like it or not, it's coming. And we need to think about how does that impact people? You know, um, the automation. But, but, how but how it, is that going to impact yeah. the people that we have working in there? I, I, I don't have the answer. I just think it's something to think about. So, so here's my on that, because I'm with you, Court, on this too, is the generation, like for us, we want the server to come up and, you know, do everything they do that wows us. But the generation that is coming up right now don't have, like, haven't been raised with that. They've been raised with their phones, ordering through their phones or watching, having a conversation with someone in a, in a you know, in FaceTime or tick, whatever it is, in this kind of format. This, they're normal. This is normal. Um, how my kids hang out with their friends. They don't have them over hanging out, watching TV. They're online playing video games, probably in the same neighborhood, but not in the same room. So it's a different way of how the generation's being raised where they're not going to know or look at that level. They actually might think someone coming to the table is kind of creepy and, and, and get asking your name or how are you doing today? So it is what, what we're 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 used to, but what the generation of, and also what right. the Chipotle's and what the Starbucks's are focused on are those generations that aren't used to that, or that's what their norm is, right? So I think we are going to see more of that because it becomes normal for them. That's your target audience, and then we'll have our our places to go on our own. But I think you'll get into QSRs more and more. It's going to be about cost. And speed and efficiency. Uh, we're seeing AI already impact all the drive-throughs in that model as well. And uh, 
They do see a larger increase in sales, by the way, when there is a, a bot or an AI system attached to those ordering platforms. Uh, they are upselling better than people, is what the statistics are showing. Uh, significantly, not just a little, significantly. Um, but I, I do think there's a place. That's a training function, though. I, I really, I, I think people can outsell the bot. And, and I know, but how, I think the reason is, is what the machine isn't going to forget, Dom. No, I get it. I, I'm and, with and, you and, and I understand and that, but I think us, a, us as owners, us as trainers, us as, as service providers, we're doing a disservice not only to our customers, but more importantly to our staff and our employees. 100%. We're not, the, the, I firmly believe that the people that, that embrace hospitality service, they're going to be the winners in the future because – just so many people aren't offering it. So, and, and our kids, they crave service as much as you, I go out with my granddaughter. She's impressed when she has good service. She's like, that server was really nice. They did this. They did that. She like, she, you know, she's with me. So she, we talk about these things, but <clears throat> um, I, I think kids, kids want to see good service too. They, they're, they're impressed by robots and all that shit too. Right. So if you ask a 15-year-old right now, you want to go to a restaurant that serves you with robots and comes to your table with a bot or robot, or do you want a cranky 60-year-old singing guy? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they're going to pick? <laughs> robot, um, 10 to 1 all the time. Really? I hope not. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't want that. I'm just telling you the way I, I really believe that we're going to go. Right. And so that's why I think experiences, creating experiences at your restaurant is so important. I mean, if you look at like Toys R Us, for example, um, if they had pivoted where if they had an experience where you had to go to Toys R Us and you, I don't know, you had your birthday parties or whatever, yeah. but they tried to compete with Amazon and um, they lost. I mean, paying people, you can't compete with robots. And, and so, hard, you know, rethinking like how can I turn my restaurant into an experience? You know, there's a putt putt uh, brewery right here where they've got putt putt and, you know, beer. Um, you know, laser tag, it's fun playing laser tag and beer, you know, escape rooms. I mean, what can you do to create a unique experience where people go out and have fun? And it's not just the eating, it's the experience. I love that. So, gentlemen, as we wrap up tonight, I thought it'd be kind of fun just to wrap, bring this back in and find out what chat GPT will tell us about the future of our restaurants. Awesome. And see what it does. Right. So let's bring that up here. We'll get our producer to do that. Dominic. Um, and bring that up. Thanks for the awesome producer, by the way, uh, our team here. Um, so let's see what the, what is the future of the restaurant industry in Canada and in the U S List three things that will happen in the next year. This is in the next year. Fuck, I hope it says robots. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I want servers. Here we go. So let's see what the fancy. Oops. Push this screen. Here we go. Let's see what it says. So we're going to see more technology integrated into the operations, digital ordering platforms, contactless service, automation in the kitchen. I agree with that. Yeah. Oh, dining experiences, personalizing the dining experiences. We've heard that before. AI mm -hmm. recommendations, virtual reality menus becoming more common. Hello, heard of that 10 years ago. Um, conven convenience and speed. <laughs> And uh, the growth of ghost kitchens and delivery models. I, I, I've been reading ghost kitchens are gone or like it's almost lost. I've but heard that. Indicating, right. You heard that too, Roger? Yeah. I mean, it was a novel idea at first, but again, the, it's such a controversial topic with third party delivery and the fees and the percentages and the, how it reduces what's already a thin margin and a thin margin business. So it's been hugely controversial. Um, and then ethical sustainability and ethical eating will become more prominent. Ethical. And I believe in that as well. I think that will be really big. What do you think gentlemen, any last thoughts on what AI is telling us? Did you see what um, 
who is it? Um, who owns ChatGPT? OpenAI is that the company? Yeah, yeah, it's OpenAI. So, did you see they they have a new product that's coming out, which is basically text generative video? And so you, I mean, it looked real. It looked like real people. And, and so you just say, I want a person walking through um, Times Square of New York, blah, blah, blah. And it was up to a minute long. It was incredible. So they, I guess it's in beta right now. Look it up after this. It, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Roger, last thoughts. Do you think, do you think Chad is totally out to lunch here? Because it is being cranky. Well, it mirrors a lot of what you had to say about how the generation growing up and how a lot of those people don't necessarily care so much about the hospitality pieces. They care about their experience being convenient and fast and satisfying in their own way. So it hurts you. It does. Hey. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> I I'm quit. That's it. I'm <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Say one more word, and that's it. Dana White? I'm done with podcast. to a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it definitely hurts. Yeah. Dominic, last thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, I'm, these I'm, I'm guys on? I, too. I, I think um, on the, on the you know, if we have these gentlemen on again, I, I'd like to talk about the third-party delivery part of, of that sort of discussion there in the ghost kitchens. Um yeah, you know what? I, I think I think technology is going to take us so far, and and it, it it's obviously going to have a, a bigger play in the less service oriented operations, right? That don't need service and hospitality and all that. It's probably because I'm older and I'm dining out way more than I ever did, you know, almost daily uh, because of my circumstance and I can, um, that I I'm noticing these differences. Um, but it's, um, I, I think, I think we'll reach a point of backlash where we've, we've had so much AI, so much, uh, automation, so much, yeah. so much, um, non-service, non-hospitality that we're going to say, I want back to my old shit. I want back to my old service. I, I don't care about technology. I'm 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 happy it's there, but it's you know it's like taking out the self checkouts. Uh, restaurants are restaurants are doing it because we need the bodies or we need the automation, right? Um, but it's not the fix. I don't. Think um, I don't see us <laughs> having less AI and technology in the future. No, no, and I know that's hard for us it. to say. We're still, it's like a hundred percent, we're still going to have it, but I think we're going to reach a point of pushback and backlash to it. We're, <laughs> we're industry's pushing it. They have to. They 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 have no no option but to embrace it. Yeah. But the, the I think the winners, the the people that are going to they're going to do exceptionally well, or the people that find a way because there's not only a lot of people that are my age, Jay. There's young people that are that don't want that in as an experience. They want the singing server, and and that that novelty of it is is uh, is going to be an attraction. I don't. I, don't I think it'll be a novelty. I don't think it'll be mass. Probably. That's my thought. <laughs> yeah, it's, because, it's because we're letting the bloody robots do everything. We're not know, teaching but, anybody to do you're, anything. You're the, you're the farmer that says, I got to still use the plow. No, the absolutely not. I'm for training. I'm for empowering people. I'm for, but let's, let's get our staff doing some of the, I'm, I'm a hundred percent about empowering my staff. I don't want a robot serving me and in any circumstance. And I don't want him serving my kid because one day that robot's going to grab you by the neck and choke you and say, you to leave me enough of a tip. No, you're just going to be, you'll be like, I have to train a fucking robot today. That's what, it, what it's going to be. <laughs> Here's an idea. Anyways, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure as we wrap up tonight. Dominic, I'm impressed. You only use government once tonight. Um, and thank you, gentlemen. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed yourselves as much as we did. And to everyone on TikTok, thank you so much. 
A lot of people join us over on TikTok and on Instagram. Thank you, everyone that was joining us on Instagram as well. A lot of people there. I rem- your names. It's I always love how people kind of create their names on TikTok. I mean, on Instagram. I won't even try to attempt to name what those names are, but um, yeah, well done. Love love those. Yeah, I'm sure those are good. Um, <laughs> as you tell people your handles. Um, anyways, Court, all the best. And Thank you. For- yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for everything you do. And Roger, let's stay in touch as well. Thank you, Jay. Um, I'm follow up for you as well, my homework. And gentlemen, you know what I found? I'm going to show you this really quick because I just saw it on my desk. Guess what I found the other day on my fr- up in my fridge? I haven't seen one of these in a while, have you? A Blackberry? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I had one of those. God, what year was that? <laughs> that was, that ah, was that's awesome. You saved that, man. Isn't that cool? You bury that in the backyard in the time capsule, right? <laughs> exactly. Look at it. That is like cool. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. Did you ever use it? Yeah. Yeah. For work, are we talking about? <laughs> hey, you got a Palm Pilot too? I, I, <laughs> I had one. I had one. <laughs> it actually has a battery. Do you remember cell phones? You could take the batteries out at one time? Yeah. Yeah. This that's wild. We're getting old. That's wild. Here you go, Dominic. <laughs> You can type pretty good on that thing. It's like you probably flipping. Like I got a flip phone still. Better than my phone so. today. I think the BlackBerry had the best typing thing. Oh, it does. It feels good. I want yeah. those keyboards. Right. Mini keyboard. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much, Dominic. Awesome. Thanks, Dominic. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Dom. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank, Thank you, you Jay. Jay. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay Bye. well. Jay, am I staying on? Yes. <laughs> gotta, gotta rip me one. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> You're right. Bye. Ciao.